wonderful boys and girls, and welcome to Storytime with Avant Garde Books. I'm Cherie Hardy, and I hope you're having a great day. I am going to read a book called Charlotte in Paris. This book was written in 2003 by Joan McPhail Knight, and the illustrations are by Melissa Sweet. Well, if you have a copy, you know what to do. Make sure you're getting very comfortable, you're relaxed, so you can listen to Charlotte in Paris. April 28, 1893, Rue de Amicor, Giverny. The postman has been very grumpy lately. He says there are so many American painters here in Giverny that he can scarcely lift his mailbag with all the letters he has to carry. He handed me an important-looking letter addressed to Monsieur and Madame Glidden. When Papa came home from painting at the river, he let me open the envelope. It's an invitation to Paris. A Miss Mary Cassatt is having an exhibition. Papa says she is the most famous woman painter in all of Europe. The Fosters will be going too. Lizzie Foster is my best friend. When Papa decided to come to Giverny a year ago, Lizzie and I missed each other so much. Then Mr. Foster decided he also wanted to learn the new French way of painting called Impressionism. So the Fosters have come to Giverny and rented a house right down the street from us. Last night we had our neighbors, the Perrys, to dinner to meet the Fosters. Edith Perry is my age and she has a little dog named Degas, just like my dog, Toby. Ramon set the table out in the garden and cooked a special dinner of tiny rose hens with their feet tied together. For dessert, we had tarte tatin, a delicious upside-down apple cake. Edith and I told Lizzie all about our famous neighbor, the Simone. When we got to the part about the water garden and the Japanese bridge, Lizzie had to see for herself. She climbed the garden wall and crept along the mossy stones past Monsieur Monet's hothouse to the bamboo forest until we could see the jazz Japanese bridge and Monsieur Monet could see us. <laughs> we had such a fright, we fell to the ground. I hope Mama never finds out about this. She always tells me to mind my own affairs. May 20th, 1893, Rue de Amicro, Giverny. This morning, I sat in a green field and painted a picture of bright red puppies. Then I saw something I had never seen before. Fifteen or twenty ladies riding bicycles down the middle of the road. Toby ran after them, barking, and disappeared in the cloud of dust the bicycles made. I was glad when he came running back to me a dusty little ball of fur. Mama says the young ladies are from America, here to learn about painting en plein air, outdoors, instead of a studio. But she thinks they are more interested in young men and lawn tennis than they are in art classes. Not like Miss Aimé, who was having tea with Mama when I got home. She asked Ramon if she would sit for a portrait. Pourquoi pas, said Ramon. Why not? Miss Ament wanted to, her to wear her apron, but Ramon said no. She wants her portrait painted in her Sunday best, just like everybody else. Later, Lizzie came by with some sweet peas seeds she brought from Alphador Island back home. We planted them along the sunny wall behind my garden. Then we found just the right spot for pumpkin seeds that Monsieur Soray gave me. He is the best gardener in the world and knows everything there is to know about a vegetable garden, a patager, as he calls it. On the seed packet it says, Rouge vif des tombes. I have never heard of bright red pumpkins before. I can't wait to see them. June 10th, 1893, Rue de Amico, Giverny. When I looked out my window this morning, I counted 22 workmen, 
digging at Monsieur Monet's garden. Monsieur Scorrez says the water garden is taking more time and money to build than Monsieur Monet thought it would. The cowherds say his new plants are poisoning the water. Monsieur Scorrez thinks cowherds should concern themselves with cows, not the affairs of Le Grand Maître, the great master. Mrs. Perry says Monsieur Monet is the finest landscape painter in the world. No one can paint water, and the way light falls on it, the way he can. Is that what the water garden is for? I wonder. For painting? Or is it to put pike fish on the table, as Monsieur Soret thinks? My tutor, Mademoiselle Bertu, came today. She said, I spend so much time looking out the window at the water garden, I should learn the French words for what I see there. As soon as the lesson was over, I ran to Lizzie's. They're packing to go to Seacoast. Lucky Lizzie, I wish we could go along, but Papa says there is far too much to do here in Givani. So be too bad. Lizzie promised to bring me back a bucket full of seashells. June 20th, 1893, Rue de Amicor Givigny. Monsieur Monet rushed past me this morning, his arm filled, arms filled with paints and canvases. If I hadn't jumped aside, he would have bumped into me. I ran to find Mrs. Perry. Surely she would know where he was off to in such a hurry. Through the studio window, I could see her painting a portrait of herself. She looked very serious. I waited until she put her paintbrush down to speak, just as Papa taught me. Maybe he went to Ua, she said. He spoke about painting the cathedral there. Of course, I haven't seen much of him lately, she went on. He is in such a black mood. At first, I was afraid. Monsieur Bonnet had told her about the other night, but then she went on to say that all the American painters are driving him away. They want painting lessons, and Monsieur Monet doesn't believe painting can be taught. He says painters have to discover things on their own. Tonight we went to the Body Hotel for supper. It was as noisy as ever, with everyone talking and laughing at once. Madame Bavi brought over a saucer of milk for Toby and a petite beef stick, a tiny steak. I had to shout to tell her we are going to Paris for the exhibition. She said Mademoiselle Cassé has been a guest at the hotel on more than one occasion. Not only that, she has a dog just like Toby. Its name is Bappy, and she takes it everywhere just like me. July 1st, 1893. Rue de Amicor, Giverny. Today Mama had Miss Hale to tea in the garden. She just got back from painting school in Paris. Mama wanted to know all about what the ladies there are wearing. Ostrich feathers and silks, said Miss Hale. The only feathers here are chicken feathers. Mama will have to wait until we get to Paris if she wants feathers of another kind. Later, I went to the kitchen to see what Raymond was doing. She was sitting at the table with the postman. He stops in after his rounds for a glass of wine and some talk. Today, he brought a card from Lizzie. On the back it says, Hotel de Roche Noire, Couville. Our hotel is called Hotel of the Black Rocks. Rocks. That's because the rocks are covered with seaweed. There are more painters here than boats on the sea. One of them is Monsieur Monet. Today he had a temper tantrum and threw his paint box into the waves. I learned how to dive. A bientôt. See you soon. Love, Lizzie. When I read the card out loud, the postman laughed. He said it won't be the first time Monsieur Monet has to telegraph Paris for a new paint box. And then he remarked that artists aren't like other people. Why, just today he saw something très curieux, very unusual in the garden of Monsieur and Madame Macmoni. Who are the Maconis, I wonder? And what did the postman see? 
All right, boys and girls, we're going to stop here and I will continue the story in the next few days. I hope you enjoy Charlotte in Paris. This was written by Joan McPhail Knight and the illustrations are by Melissa Sweet. Well, I'll continue reading. Boys, I appreciate you. Thank you for listening. Have a great day. You are amazing. Don't forget that.